And we are live on this glorious day. It's great. Help me. <laughs> Man, I should probably add uh, Winnie in here somewhere just in case, but. Eh. Who knows? I'll put them all alone. <laughs> it's like you occasionally get to join in. <laughs> When you're not having your tomb annihilated. Mm, thank you. <laughs> oh, Aserac, I've annihilated your tomb. Uh, um, yeah, welcome to the Philitary Podcast, the podcast in which we talk about all things D&D and nerdy shit. I'm joined here with the wonderful players, Jeeves and Rook, uh, and uh, Yoshi. Rook might join. We don't know yet. And today we're talking about the dumbass rules that we use in this campaign, the Realm War. And as you can see, the, the document all around us. Um, so yeah, we use Giphy Glyphs, Darker Dungeons, because these guys won the harder campaign. Uh, we're just going to kind of go through why we use them. Uh, what. What other rules we use, like, on, you know, house rules that kind of spice up gameplay a little bit times. Uh, so, yeah. Gonna begin here. Rookie characters, I think. Uh, I can't explain why they wanted to do it, so guys, give me a reason as to why you guys wanted to do rookie characters. <laughs> I think it was mainly uh, Kenny that was that suggested it. Okay, of course. I like the idea of basically starting from nothing and being able to flesh out your character. Instead of just starting like, ooh, level 5, we already have all these abilities. How do we get these abilities? Mm -hmm. How do we go through? It makes the first couple of sessions a lot more dangerous mm -hmm. in the right way. Because usually it's, oh no, you have goblins, and you still one shot, right? But if you have a rookie character, that's not gonna happen. Goblins will likely one shot you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think our rookie character's highest health is like six or seven HP. Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> yeah, something very low. Yeah. You're pretty much higher now, so it's not too bad. Uh, but you've been level one longer than you were level zero. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's yeah. not like they've actively killed any villagers. <clears throat> not yet. You get a little bit of XP. Although we are about to leave Tyberton, mm -hmm. probably um, set the town on fire. No, oh, great, so oh, good. Nah. Uh, well, this is uh, pretty much rookie characters. So basically, you run off your background rather than a class. So I don't know what everyone picked. <clears throat> as far as I know, I. Think Coroner is a guild artisan, I believe he was. Yeah, I yeah. started as a guild artisan. <clears throat> uh, Spitz is something. I think he's a criminal, I think he was. I think. Uh, An urchin, potentially. I don't know. It's, <clears throat> that's why we need Rook on. Yeah, I know. It, it, we, we don't have. Kenny with us today because of personal circumstances, and uh, we don't have Owl either because uh, he plays uh, Tomb of Annihilation on Mondays, and I didn't know this until yesterday. So like, oh, okay. Um, I don't even know what Lucius was. Is he like a you know charlatan? <clears throat> You're goddamn right, he is. <laughs> <laughs> look at this! Look at this guy! Think he's the he's lording it up. Uh, it, it was definitely a, a strange start because 
balancing combat for you guys was going to be hard. So it's mostly going to be storytelling from that point. And then just moving in then. Oh, destiny points. The only person that really drained theirs was Lucius. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just all the fuck fuck you. <laughs> How many do I have? Three? I want to use all of them to get the fuck out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Yeah, because I think I used two of them just trying to climb into the inn. Get away from that shadow. You used one to... Um, recover from a fall that would have made it catch up to you and then the other one was to get into the window and the last one i cannot for the life of me remember what it was uh oh it was the cultists you used it oh, to yeah. um dodge yeah. through them I slide between, yeah yeah that's what it was otherwise i would have oh. <laughs> one of us uh, yeah, the leveling up thing's okay, I guess. You get to keep a saving throw, proficiencies, cantrips, or hit points. Which ain't bad, to be honest with you. It's a nice little boost. Uh, makes you a little bit more different than garbage level ones. Uh, I think all of us went with the health boost, except for... I think except health. for... Uh... Coronar, uh, I, I kept my cantrips. Uh, oh, Coronar uh, yeah. and Henry kept their cantrips. Because a, a paladin never gets cantrips, but he has Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, and I got uh, Boom and Blade as a fighter, which <laughs> usually never gets cantrips. Unless you're an Eldritch Knight. I mean, yeah, unless you go the magic class. Which is kind of strong if you build it right, which I've never done in my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna either. Um, uh, it's adventure seeds. I don't need that. The seeds of chaos were sown when you guys decided to fucking leave. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're leaving again. It's like, hey, we we're gonna go to Fatha, so. Hey, Moo, you know those, like, 18 pages you have written about Vatha and all the missions you could potentially done? Yeah, we're going to cross the water. <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> well, you, you, give it, you keep giving us reasons either not to go somewhere or to abandon the place we are in. So, no. no the, the How much pussies? The place that we're in currently is because of <laughs> Winnie's weather roll. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right. Fair enough, we'll give that one to Winnie, but uh, we are also taking a quest getting out of here, so mm -hmm. there's added reason. However, yeah. going to Vathe, uh, good luck, there, there is, if we bring the dudes with whom we have a quest to there, then we're oh, we never going to bring him to Vathe, we just drop him off at uh, the Lord yeah, yeah, we are, we are, but he's affiliated with a criminal gang, and we kind of don't want that right now. Or at least we think he's affiliated with a criminal gang. Well, like a gang that uh, Banken was apparently a part of, or was a part of. That or is afraid of. Regardless, <laughs> reasons not to go back. <laughs> um. Right, well, I guess we'll move on to uh, the next rule we have from Giphy Glyphs, which is the inventory slots. I, I prefer them, to be honest with you. I quite like that. Instead of just walking about with like 20k in your back pocket. <laughs> uh, it, it's much better. It really makes you choose what you have instead of just, I'm stuffing everything in my pockets. I have become so thick with money. I will buy your city. This giant sword, it's mine now. Mm -mm. Uh, uh, it's just a sword that's uh, <laughs> three times taller and you just shove it down your pocket. Interdimensional pockets. Is that an interdimensional space <laughs> in your trousers? Are you just happy to see me unfold and everything pours out? <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I think it was definitely a, a, a decision that I think I definitely wanted to see used. Because after the last campaign where you guys were just carrying around hundreds of thousands of gold, I was like, yeah, that don't make sense to me, chief. <laughs> I'm usually quite lenient with ammunition and coins with this campaign. Nah. Nah. Ain't happening. Which is why we take the holy hand card with us. For like 20 slots. And eventually we're going to upgrade it to the holy hand forge. <laughs> Still gonna be pulled by hand, not even a horse. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. always gonna be a hand-drawn carriage. Listen, we're gonna have uh, an entire group of cavalrymen escorting us, right? <laughs> you must protect the, the cart at all costs. <laughs> I can't believe we've got a stat block for the cart as well, just to make sure. <laughs> I was like, hey, this thing's got some con. The rest of it. <sighs> What's the hand card's charisma? Charisma? It's fucking minus four. <laughs> it's a, it's a card. It's intelligence. <laughs> like two. What's his passive perception? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent that I get, can't it's, notice me sneaking up on it. It's got dexterity and strength and con. It's got all the physical attributes because if it goes, if it's dropped down a hill, it accelerates and then people make a strength save against it. Oh, you just point it downhill, jump in, and off you oh, go. Hold a spear. Threading with, with wheels. Um, there's not much to say about active inventory apart from like, I can say how many slots a piece of equipment has, which is great. Which is that's what confused me for a while when I was reading this. I was like, is there any like guidelines to this? And apparently, no. Not at all. It's kind of like, okay, I want to buy a bag with six slots. Okay, it's going to be X amount of gold. But, um, I still want to know why Henry is encumbered. I still want to know why. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I have tried to make his inventory correct. It ain't working. I think he might have added a backpack and forgot to set it to give him extra slots. But that's a, that's a thing. I have a backpack. I have no idea how to give it extra Um, what you do is, it's got like those little boxes, it has like, uh, modify inventory slots, and you just change it to the amount of slots you have and it adds on. I'm loading right now. Let's see, So, backpack. Uh, max capacity, alright, it says capacity 3. Yeah, there should be another, like, thing under it, it's like, modify inventory slots or something like that. Uh -huh. And you just in there. I need to put in three. Yeah, and you put okay. the three in there, and it should modify your slots. Awesome! Now I know it. I figured that out. Create, creating Aiden Drass and Guinevere Brasslock. I was like, ha! Huh. I figured it out in the last what, week and a half. Yeah, <laughs> the sheets are different than what they used to be, for certain. Oh, absolutely! Uh, I, I dragged the backpack from the. Uh, the compendium thing and it just counted as a regular item. It doesn't count it as a container automatically. No, nope. you have to do it yourself. Tag container. Yeah. yeah, and then modify as appropriate. So that might be what uh, Kenny's problem is with uh, Henry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't see a sheet, so I yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll I'll sort that out. Uh, yeah. Speaking of inventory slots, yeah. one of the things that we decided that we're definitely not fucking good is uh, the notches thing. Mm. Oh, hell no. The yeah, we're still getting damaged over time. I mean, I use notches for NPCs at your level. Like, Guinevere had a notched weapon because it was damaged. Um, Aiden Drass's armor is damaged. Uh... Now, Winnie's Gambaston is damaged. That's been notched. It's been broken, essentially. Uh, so it's it's a good balancer. If I want to hand you an item, I think it's too strong at the moment. And just be like, okay, it's notched. It's quite badly damaged. Um, for you know, reasons. 
So, yeah. yeah, estimating bulk. That's uh that's mathematics and I don't like that. <laughs> it's too much. Um Yeah, it would be under B. Maybe under items under B. Uh looking for it in difficult, I don't see it. You won't you won't find it in difficult. I thought you were meaning roll twenty. Yeah, you won't find it. There is there is no reference to it. Oh, yeah, because I'm trying to figure out how many slots it has. It has three. Everyone's backpack has three. Yeah, if you want to have a bigger backpack, you need to buy one. Yeah, so there is a little thing. It's like transporting goods and magical containers and stuff. Um, it kind of gives you an idea of how it would be. So like a haversack has, like the handy haversack has 12. Uh, so I usually just go, okay, divide that by four, and that gives me an idea. Mm -hmm. And the bag of holding, interestingly, only has six inventory slots. Still quite a lot, surprisingly. Cause... Still quite a lot for something that's literally uh, the size of a coin purse. Well, it's a, it's a satchel, essentially. I always yeah. used to think of it as a little, like, black bag. That's what I always thought a bag of holding was. But it's not. It's a, it's a fucking satchel. I never knew yeah, that. Yeah, I've always uh, envisioned it as a little in, black satchel. In the D&D, the Hamley Haversack is the weak one, right? That's yeah, one but now it's happen. like pristine, the thing you want the most. And and the portable hole is like uh, godhood when it comes to inventory. Nah, here, not so much. Yeah. The Hamley Haversack is where you go. Mm -hmm. There's combine two of those extra dimensional items together and you have infinite space. Yeah. Yes, because you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I have infinite inventory space because I'm dead. I don't have weight or a carry capacity. Yeah this these tables on page forty eight are just so nice. Say like, how big is it? Ah uh, this Okay, it's a custom uh, thing. Okay, it's gonna be this big. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to stab some gambas down at some point. No, at least. Damn it, Giffy Glyph. You, you took too right. much time, man. It, look at this. Oof. Oh, so things have bulk. Yeah, some things do have bulk. Uh, like. Equipment packs, especially. Uh, but tools, yeah, they've got. It depends on their size, really. Uh, yeah, because the bulk is the amount of inventory slots it takes. Yeah. If I understand it correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's alright, I suppose. Um, I heard some ideas of this little tiny thing, the little exemplar. Quivers count as inventory slots, sheaths, they count bags. Yeah, that's quite useful. Container categories, bag, belt, sheath, quiver, worn. There we go. I will have all of my armor with pockets of interdimensional space and I will become the treasurer. <laughs> Two long swords in these breast pockets. And yeah. It's going to become like the guy from Resident Evil with <laughs> the coat. What do you want to buy? Yeah. Wait, the backpack counts as a bag, so should it have four slots? Three. That is that is a bag with four slots. So that, that example is. I always say it's three to start with. Because like if you if you look further down into there, which is covered by my glorious face, uh, there is one that says Vikings inventory, which is a bag that has fourteen slots. So it's obviously discretion. Because that's a 
big ass bag. I want a belt with 20 slots. <laughs> the utility belt. Da na 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 cat man. Uh, we're in tear. Uh, yeah, we thought about that and decided, nope, too mm -hmm. much hassle. It is too much hassle, definitely. Maybe a one shot, but nah. Yeah. Fight off as many zombies as you can before your weapon snaps and you have to go full ham hunk. Um, nah, item quality is quite good. Uh, it was definitely something um, I used for when you were skinning things or maintaining like uh, fresh meat and stuff. It's like, okay, how good is it? Uh, basic wear and tear. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, there we go. That's the one I was using. Basic wear and tear. It's basically, it's fine, it's damaged, it's broken. Uh, they don't affect the utility of your gear until they are broken. Damaged sword still cuts well, but a broken sword must be repaired. Yeah. Repairing, very much in Coronar's favor there, so it's a nice thing. I never read into destructive attacks, because that sounds terrifying. <laughs> Like, I I don't want to do that to you guys. No. Specifically, damage it. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna punch you in the belt. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you straight in your fucking weird looking cod piece, and you're gonna hate it. <laughs> it yeah, you know your quiver. Fuck that quiver. This is also something we never included was ammo dice. That makes no sense to me. Yeah. Like. Maybe, you know, dice? like, I get if it would probably be useful later on in the campaign when you've got archers and you just see how many times they can go before they run out. Which, actually, I might actually do. It's actually a great idea. Instead of being like, okay, they can keep firing and firing and firing. It's like, okay, they can fire X amount of times before they run out. So, that could, makes sense. That could be a good idea, or ballistae and stuff like that. So it saves you being like, okay, we're just gonna keep shooting arrows at them. <laughs> How many more you got? Uh, replenishing ammo. Uh, crafting coroner specialty. <laughs> Active oh, yeah. crafting materials. I still need to update the universal metal index. I need. I need to find the time. So fucking. There's so much time. <laughs> Um, we have time. We don't have a board yet. Earth, wind, fire. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, I could definitely use this table, but I, I don't wanna. Half these things, I'm like, yeah, they'll kill every one of you if I send them your way. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Crafting time. <laughs> Millennia. A million plus days. A castle. A giant pyramid. A castle takes a thousand years? No, no, no. Days. A thousand? Yeah. A, a, hun a million days. How many people are working on that then? I don't. Is this based on one person? Because if it's one person, then you can just have like twenty thousand people, and it's done quicker. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like it's kind of war, man. Was your centuries? For it's based on one person. That number. All right. I mean, a million days. Sure, unless they're a fucking I mean, wizard. For for a single person. Oh yeah, for one person, yeah. One to five days. A meal? That's a... Trying to feed the 500 or something like that? Five days? Yeah, yeah. It's going to take one day to make a meal because you need to hunt down the cow and mm -hmm. butcher it. And then you need to go hunting for the vegetables to go with it. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, suit of armor does take time. Like if like hide and leather might not take as long, but like chainmail that definitely takes a hundred days to make. That shit is hard. Watching documentaries for research, and I'm like, heavy armor takes a long fucking time to make. <laughs> Holy crap! But damn. I mean, I can't hit the anvil like five times and have a set of armor. <laughs> what, what do you mean this isn't Skyrim? What do you mean I can't keep making daggers and get my smithing up to 100? <laughs> what are you talking about? I lost my plan. Recipe materials. Astronomical. Do it. Mind you, that... That thing there ties in really really well with why there's no uh single amount of uh, a certain metal in kagara <laughs> there's something being built that is as big as a castle <laughs> and it's all made of metal is it a castle uh, kind of <laughs> no it's not a castle it's a fortress kind of yeah um applying restrictions yeah it's fine yeah that's actually quite a good thing if you want to make enchanted stuff you need to be proficient in arcana as well as uh, as enchanting stuff but we, man, we're talking about yeah no problem um well, you, i mean problem. you would need to learn it from probably a professional like a, an arcane smith or if you want to do um if you want to learn necroic and radiant enchanting you need to go to a holy blacksmith which are very far and few, but there's a few. Uh, materials, set quantity, gemstones. Oh, damn, that's bad. Oh, that's actually very handy, though. Come to think of it, it gives you a different value between cut and uncut. And it gives you great, right? it gives you a clear they indication as well. Yeah. Because it's usually D and D will just tell you this is a gem. This is how much it's worth. This tells you, hey, you have a gemstone, but here's all the things that it could be. It could be a cloudy diamond worth like four gold. It's like, oh so yeah. If we have a miner, we may actually find some gemstones within the mines, right? There is a there is a chance, yeah. Right, but they'll all be uncut. Yeah. Unlike if we had the same miner and we use normal D and D rules. You know, oh yeah, he'd be, he'd be, he'd be like, uh, uh, uh. exactly. Uh, at least on arcane jewels, uh, I don't think Coronar's a jeweler. I'll ignore this. <laughs> this is probably something that I think I'll end up discussing with you, Jeeve, is your master work, like your pl your magic uh, plus ones and stuff like that, for yep. doing that and socketing items into it uh i could probably do that Let's see get a masterwork item um with the the sort of weird rule sets i've got for you you will have to find like a blueprint for a masterwork and then start to develop it it just says uh it is a piece of armor with no enchantments or special features but it's considered oh, a magic weapon or piece of armor with no enchantments or special features is considered a masterwork. You can socket things into it. So you can put like enchanted gems and stuff inside of it to give it a power or something. Uh, yeah. Jewel crafting. Finally, so I use for a jeweler's kit. <laughs> Jewel recipes. That's actually pretty good. Like you've got like these little things here like luck, resilience, resistances. Weapons. That's pretty damn good. I think D and D is heavily lacking, and when it comes to uh, crafting or using your tool sets, right? Tool they, proficiency tool sets. They try to develop a little bit with Xanathars, but it doesn't give you any real idea of how how much potential you could have with it. And that's that's why I don't like running like published campaigns because <laughs> I'm like. There's no room here for you guys to do this. All those campaigns are two things. Talking and fighting. There is no middle ground. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else. Uh, yeah, pretty much. 
where there's this, it's mostly talking, and then occasionally fights that kind of have some sort of semblance of motivation to them. Uh, right. Yeah. Even though we have mostly talking, right? We also add in the crafting. We also add in the traveling. Mm -hmm. Things matter. Mm -hmm. uh, oils. I. I would use this rule if any of you were blood hunters, which would make more sense. Very witchery. <laughs> it's like. Uh, I don't really think you get an oil making kit because it's a very. Mind you, herbalism maybe. Uh, no, potions. Ah, awesome. <sighs> uh, yes, potions. The one I want to get to. Where is it? I don't. Flasks. Yes. This. Is the thing I can't wait to give you guys as a flask for like healing and stuff like that. Which will use flask dye. So you got an Estus flask. <laughs> I'm gonna drink the, the sweet nectar. Taste the sun. Taste the sun. Alright, so if I'm reading this correct, the flask was a multi use potion. Pretty much, yeah. It's like it's like a big jug for healing. Um, healing or other things. Yeah, and you fill it to a certain amount, and it even gives you like a little um, amount of how much it would cost you for say a d twenty of uses. Uh, it's twenty two times the base cost of it. So, if it was just a standard healing potion flask, that would be over a thousand. <laughs> 1100 gold. Yeah, that's a lot of cash. Or a never ending potion. For, oh. well, a potion that will eventually run out. Um, eventually, but based on luck. Yeah, uh, tr instead of tracking individual drinks, a flask quantity is measured with a die. Um, roll it whenever you take a drink from the flask. If you roll one or two, the die gets one size smaller. Okay. Mm -hmm. So every time, if you've got a d20, you've got a 5% chance to drop down. Which, it's not bad. 10%. It's 1 and 2. Oh, it's 1 and 2. Oh, yeah, I was reading that wrong. 10%. Stop it! <laughs> I mean, it's heavily expensive. If the first drink you take, you roll a 1. That's that's so costly because the next die is a d12. Yeah. You lose 8 potential good rolls mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. And knowing Henry, it would be him. <laughs> like, oh, he went down. Just feed him a little potion and see if he just rolls on one. Like, ah, shit. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use these flasks for you guys and try to make it. And you do get ways to fill your flask. Uh, buying just individual flasks. Uh, making one. Uh, and then taking action. I have no idea what we wanted to use from this. I think it was ability checks mostly, like open skills and interaction. Um, eh. I think the most used skill so far that isn't like insight or perception is performance. Because that's a very underrated skill, I feel. Okay, if you stick on a, a disguise, it would be deception and performance because you're playing a character playing a character. <laughs> so that's a True. an important thing there. It's not just for bards to be like, yeah, here's Wonder Wall. But hey, a cat will be amazing. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's the other thing I didn't like was intelligence as initiative. Nah, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't happening to you. Works well for uh, wizards. It does, but then if you're a war mage, you become an unstoppable animal because you add your no, int already, so you're like, yeah. other, It's one or the other. Yeah. No. If you use in in initiative... Uh, oh, I'll no, there it is. If you're a war wizard, your tactical weight class feature now grants a Dex bonus, not intelligence. Oh, fuck. You're just all out 
beefcake with a sword and a staff just ready to rumble. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. It it makes sense if you've planned it out, but not reactive. Because yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're we're so convincing in this uh, these rules, eh? It's, man, I I don't even know what sort of things to like talk about really, because it's just us going over the rules that we've used. I mean, the homebrew rules we can definitely talk more about because that stuff we've had since what campaign one. That's a bit easier. We can talk to that and then circle back later for uh, rests. Hopefully, we'll yeah. do Hopefully. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, scroll back. Degrees of success I'm actually going to come back to as well. Uh, so I'm going to hold there. Um, yeah, homebrew rules. Like the house rules. I think they were made just out of necessity more than anything for like the sake of play. When I did. Uh, for like the crit save and fail rules for saves versus damaging things uh, I don't know if that's well I think most of you guys got the benefit of those last campaign definitely uh, especially at later levels Are we having technical difficulties? I think so. No, we're in fact. Yeah. Or maybe it's because Yoshi's completely muted. <laughs> I mean, Yoshi's being Yoshi. So. Uh, he, he's been gone for eight minutes and I never even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Rip. Oops. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I think uh, Henra definitely got the benefit of like the saving rules. Last campaign, especially once he got triple spell and uh, having those like com compound meta magics, yeah, he became a monster. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Me as the DM, I was like, I don't have anything that could stop him. <laughs> it's, it's bullshit. Best for our listeners, say what are the rules? Yeah. So basically, the. The crit rule for saves versus damaging spells is if you critically succeed, you take no damage or effect, and if you fail, you double it, except any effects, you just take them. Ah, sorry, microphone. Um, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. And it was designed because everyone can crit with a melee attack or a ranged attack, and the wizard's just like, fireball, and uh, I do X amount of damage, I never get to crit with these big spells and cause some serious yeah, carnage um, yeah but that was a chance one on a deck save it's gonna hurt oh yeah uh, even against a, like a demon that's only got fire resistance just like ha I take the full amount of damage you would have taken uh, I mean it's still really good <laughs> yeah um, as for like melee attacks and ranged attacks you get to add the max damage of your damage roll on top of everything else so it's you don't roll two dice you roll one plus your mod plus the max it's like oh yeah and then massive so damage you roll a d12 for your damage <laughs> it's your 1d12 plus your strength mod plus, plus 12. 12 on a crit. yeah it makes it makes crits feel a lot meatier than just having like having a 2d6 and rolling two ones plus your mod, you're like, eh. Yeah, that, that's absolutely horrible. Yeah. At least you nothing can. worse than rolling a crit and then not getting rewarded for it because the dice are not in your favor. Yeah, it's. Unless you're like a fighter with like a great weapon feat, well, the skill. It's the re roll, but it's. Eh. But I definitely prefer that variant rule that we've got there. Um, I've returned. Oh, you have returned. Oh, I was chatting shit about you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, 
Yeah, I think there were a few rules I think we did have for a while and then we just sort of forgot about them. I can't, and as such, I don't remember what half of them are. Um... Bleep. It's great for us players because we just randomly introduce or reintroduce a rule that moves forward. Yeah, um, bleeding. That was one that showed up on campaign two a few times uh, from bleed damage. Uh, that's yeah, we a, used that in the later half. Yeah, we used that. Yeah, it was definitely more in the later half of the campaign when serrated weapons and specific enchantments would give you bleed damage and resistances. Uh, it meant I had to change a few creatures a little bit to become immune to it, like elementals. They don't have blood. I think poison, you changed a bit. poison was changed up a little bit. Uh, poison itself is just pathetically weak. It's like, oh yeah, disadvantage. Yeah, but now you do poison damage and you make a con save. And now, if you fail it, you have disadvantage and poison damage. And the poison keeps going. <laughs> Exactly. But, um, I, I had, actual fucking poison. Yeah. Um, what, there, was, there was a thing that, because I was reading through the the document here and just thought, what happens if poison acts the same way as like ammo dice and you keep rolling, see if it changes instead of just having to save all the time? You're clearly fucking poisoned, so you're going to need to see how long it'll last in your body before it deteriorates yeah. enough and before you need to poop it out. I mean, you think. are poison, so it's in your bloodstream. Right? Yeah, it's your body fighting. You can't just go, <laughs> and then you're better. <laughs> Returning saves makes sense. Yeah, I I would think every time, like maybe the dice drops down a notch, you get to make a save. But if it keeps going, you you, you need to keep waiting. Which makes poison a lot scarier as a, a utility. Uh, and poison crafting. At later yeah, levels. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people. Don't use poison because it's just a eh, disadvantage. This is our campaign to make poison popular again. <laughs> <laughs> Roll 20 dark mode. It's never gonna happen. We're gonna cover that next podcast. <laughs> Roll 20, why the fuck? <laughs> Give us dark mode. Uh, I don't. I well. What were the other roles that like you guys can remember the most about? Like what, in terms of like their either en enjoyment or absolute dread for you guys, out of them. The the uh the lair action. Oh yeah, fucking oh lair actions. Yeah, and in, in an attempt to. Just stop D and D from lecturing box bosses cheat by oh yeah legendary resistance you do nothing this turn. Mm -hmm. Player actions could be a thing where uh, you're guaranteed every uh, five step increment I believe it was. Um, something is happening either the boss hits an extra attack or the layer does stuff mm -hmm. or you know minions. Yeah, uh, that was something, that is one of the rules I forgot about for a while. I still have the notes that I adjusted them for. So, uh, they roll their initiative and whatever the the result of that is, if it's lower than 20, it becomes 20 and then it goes down in 5. So if it's higher than 20, it's that minus 5 every time, down to the 4th turn. And then it's, the highest one is their main action, their... The one below that is like a either a, a single action or a layer action. The one below that is another turn, and then it's the same again. It repeats. But it it was better than just being like, yeah, they just shake off your power word kill. It's like the bullshit. <laughs> I will never forget that was campaign one. Yeah, campaign one was full of legendary resistances. It's like, yeah, they're just gonna. Ignore you. <laughs> ah. And of course, uh, this campaign uh, we actually have taunts. Yes. Yeah. Part of one of our player classes. Yeah. Uh, you can literally insult someone, and they will attack you. They won't just 
So yeah, you're the tank. We're gonna run around you to the mage. Yeah. Uh, I. It. I think what I did was I took the um. I can't remember what it is. It's one of the spells you get compelled jewel, and I just made it a class divinity thing for a paladin. I was like, yeah, you just do it to like an area of people instead of just one. It's like, yeah, you just go fight me, and but they can still go and try and attack you guys at disadvantage. But uh, better than just having them run straight at you, full gung ho. Uh, they're. Not sure how you're doing it with that uh, divine ability thing, but I know one thing that I didn't like about the compelled duel mm -hmm. is that as soon as one of your teammates does something to the person you're fighting, yeah, the spell is just gone. Yeah, which is very bizarre. I, I kind of get it breaks like the enchantment, uh, but that is the spell. This is the channel divinity, which it just goes, you have to fight me regardless, and all my friends can fucking wail on you. <laughs> which is so much better. It is. There are definitely, that's actually some uh, important things as well. It's like um, spell tweaks and just general rules for that, like. Uh, what's the, the one I use for this campaign? Uh, like, if any of you were druids, uh, Goodberry would have cost up one mistletoe per use, so you'd have to go out and find them. So, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, you have to actually have the reagent, and it is yeah. consumed. By yeah, the that, that is something that is this campaign's uh, main point. If you want to revivify someone, you better have a 300 gold's worth of diamonds on you, because coin ain't going to do it anymore. Next campaign, uh, yeah, I'm back to gold. I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, it's not just the healers that are scarce; it's resources and everything as well. Yeah. So reviving someone is more important financially than it is party base. <laughs> is this guy's life worth three hundred diamonds? No. Fuck him. <laughs> that would create so much player conflict. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't worth three hundred. Um, I don't know any. Uh, Two hundred ninety-nine. You got you guys got any other like rules that we've made that are quite? I don't know that have changed the way it work, like the game works. Cause I don't even I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. There so many of them. Yeah, well, I think we'd have them written down somewhere, right? I do have them written down somewhere. On the other computer, and I'm not booting up that old piece of shit. <laughs> what do we really need as a um, channel on the Discord? Just all right. These rules we are actively using, just as a memory source. Um, Did, didn't you start that in one of the channels that just evolved into something else? Um, there was at some point, and I can't remember. I think I got rid of it. So I was like, yeah, I don't care. Um, one very important rule that we've overlooked is the rule of cool. Uh, yeah, we just stopped using that altogether. Hey, yeah. last campaign, you got some fucking good licks with that uh, rule of cool. That was great. Yeah, but we stopped using it after campaign one because I introduced inspiration cards. That's why. Um... This campaign, I ain't doing any of that. I ain't giving you upper hands. <laughs> I ain't giving you hands. No hands. Um, but yeah, it's still a thing. If you want to be like, I want to get to there, and I want to like somersault over this guy as a part of my moon, I'm like, yeah, fucking do it. Check me. <laughs> Fail and there's trouble. Yeah, the rule of cool can quickly become the rule of fool. So, like, uh, Lucia's trying to jump over the heads of people in the bar and falling, getting trampled on, and getting sticky. That was funny. Because that would have been rule of cool, just jumping between people, but <laughs> that didn't, <laughs> that didn't work. And rule of cool, where things have actually made you lose your shit. Yeah, I mean, 
there was definitely something in campaign two. I don't remember who did it. Was it? I think it was the the Dreadlord's castle. That one of you guys like lapped off a wall and just garroted something for a while. I don't remember who did it. I just don't remember. I think it. Do you remember Malbert Meinstein? Malbert Meinstein. I don't it, remember. It gave Yoshi an inspiration. Oh yeah. Oh god, that's so long ago. That was a long time ago. I think I gave out inspiration just off the basis. Of, did you make me piss myself laughing or did you do something cool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right now it's like I I've stopped caring because you'll either make me feel miserable or you'll make me laugh so hard I cry so uh, the very first one is actually um, given to Arlington <laughs> we're using agonized hit and blast to a vampire thrall in such a hard manner that it turned the vampire into a mosaic yeah, I think it was like the second session that we had oh second yeah I, I know it was in Namlin's tower, and it was like the main part. And you, the, she sent out her bird. Vincent shot it down. You fucking pasted her in one yeah. hit. And I was like, "Yeah, oops." It's great being like a newbie DM and been like, "Holy oh shit, that was unexpected." Um, also, an agonizing blast on the stalactites to pin down an enemy. I think it was the white dragon in the mine shaft. I, uh, if I remember, that was uh, Nerazimir within the Silver Mines of Kana. So it was. It was, uh, yeah, the left hand of Nashandra. Yeah, Nerazimir. You guys hated that guy with a burning passion. I yeah, loved it. He was a dick. You, the, out of all the people you've hated the most, I think it's still the stable guy from the second campaign. Nerazimir ain't even fucking high class to this guy. <laughs> He's like king shitlord. This guy, you intentionally made him uh, someone we would pick on. So you picked on him definitely because he got turned into a mind flayer. He got full Baldur's Gate. It just mm, that too. Um, well, we diverted from rules for a minute there, but yeah, Rule of Cool is definitely something that will start to show up a little bit more. I'll be a bit more forgiving this campaign with it. Is normal people doing relatively cool stuff? Yeah, that's fine. I want a backflip. Sure. <laughs> I'm gonna triple somersault and bicycle kick this bitch. <laughs> I'd allow it. Oh, Jump off a ship, cannonball into the ocean, land on top of the water. Realize you were wearing a ring of water walking. Oh, p poor Lazara. <laughs> Those <laughs> poor knees. <laughs> yeah, that that's actually bring up a rule is if something counteracts what you're doing, it's gonna. Like, oh, ring of water walking, if you jump into water, you're gonna hit it like concrete. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Uh, what's another one that would counteract itself? I'm not sure about the counteract itself, but uh, just cause problems. Last campaign, Brook had five back-to-back -back crit mm -hmm. with his weapon. Oh yeah, with agony, yeah. Did five crits. Yeah. Fuck that weapon. I should have play tested it more. <laughs> I was like. Hey, this won't be too bad, like, at my playtesting. I was just using the standard artificer, like, yeah, it's okay, he'll be alright. And it's like, <laughs> like, oh shit, he's putting up, like, hundreds of points of damage, a go! <laughs> he just came in, like, Terry Crews and, and half Expendables. The time, and <laughs> half the time, he was killing shit before any of us even got a... Kill, steal, Darone. <laughs> With a Medirian method. Go in, fire eight shots, walk away. <laughs> um, like, that's the one thing I like about making rules for you guys is it, like, do you want me to do this? And you're like, eh, yeah, we'll play test it. And be like, eh, maybe we don't want to. 
the glory of doing that. It's fun. And, uh, I don't I don't know any rules that we've just like made together. I mean, there's like mechanics we've made together, but nothing more than that, I think. Well, we didn't deviate to any rules. Mm -hmm. This campaign is where we changed a lot. Though. Yeah, I think this campaign is a, a learning curve for me because I have some time to do stuff for like research and planning. And this file is like on the bottom of the list. <laughs> I'll like glance it and be like, yeah, that was cool. Uh, bye. I've got to go do, you know, research. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, I think it's going to be a learning curve for most of us, bar Rook, who knows this thing because he's had time to do it. Uh, who ain't here today. So we're just talking mad shit. <laughs> and. Yeah, well, I'm gonna move back onto this fun little document over here, and uh, degrees of success. It will be useful later on. Um, uh, I think the camping mechanic so far is good. I sort of I do like, like the camping the mechanic. Learning step for the degrees of success. Yeah, um, I think it's in here somewhere. Yeah. Whenever I'm looking at your stream, uh, the bottom third of the pages are just hidden behind overlap. Yeah, I know, I know. That's the point. If you want to read the whole document, go fucking get it. <laughs> go get it. It's free, pretty much, on Reddit. Go check it out. Go find it. Or you could join the community Discord and we can provide it for you. Yeah, freebie! And I'll provide you with Patreon exclusive stuff that I pay for so you don't have to. <laughs> it's it's the reverse simping effect. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I give oh, you free uh, shit. Yeah. yeah. And we paid for it. You're, you're goddamn right. Um, magical burnout? I don't think we're using this what actually I am but it's only Winnie that's affected by it for reasons that will become apparent later on I'll need to talk to Owl about it <laughs> uh, oops How, why did I burn out I sneezed <laughs> 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 I've always wanted to play a wild magic sorcerer, but I've always been like, I'm gonna get fucked so hard if I do that. <laughs> it's amazing though. Middle of the boss fight, a uh, wild magic wizard or sorcerer is gonna do an epic thing. He's, he's now blue. He's spelled out everything to the letter how he's gonna do it. He's been busy five or ten minutes explaining his turn. Rolls the wrong thing on the table. The grass grows. <laughs> uh, exploration, making a journey. I. We've pretty much done this. Um, almost just normally, like we usually do. Like plan. You pick your destination. You have. You've chosen your route. You're heading to a little orchard and then heading north. Uh, gather your supplies, which you did. You travel at dawn. Uh, you've checked the weather. You always make a weather roll. Assign rolls. Uh, I don't think you guys do that. Set the pace. Eat your breakfast. Back up. Yeah, we, we shortened the list there on travel. That allowed mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, I think having like a, a signed roll actually makes it easier to understand who's where as well. So. It's usually out of spits, um, yeah. Henry or me pulling the cart anyway. Mm -hmm. Because the car, a cap doesn't have the strength for it. Yeah. Oh, look at Yoshi posting the community Discord. Um, the good guy. What a good egg. Um, yeah, I didn't uh, type it out manually because I'm watching Twitch on Xbox. <laughs> oh! Oh! I am disappointed. 
Um, being too poor for a proper keyboard. <laughs> I use my oh, thoughts. <laughs> Encounters. Plug in a keyboard into my Xbox. <laughs> it's actually one of the the things that I've been planning to use, but I've just been using it in my own tables, like because this is how I actually break up my tables. It's character encounters, and then it's friendly and hostile encounters. That's just a thing. Discoveries. I think that would actually be a very important thing to have. It's not like, oh, it's a person. It's a thing. Or a skill challenge. Yeah, I think this rule book is great. <laughs> it's just it's great. It's a lot of things that should have been part of D&D from the start. Pretty much, yeah. Um... That I don't care about. <laughs> At some point I will, if you're in like a cave or something. Scales, that's impossible for me. I... Encounter seeds. A time you were smarter than everyone else. <laughs> Wounds and injuries. That will become more of a thing. Uh, once danger starts getting closer, I think. <clears throat> uh, definitely. Your buttocks is number 10. You can't sit down. Your booty too sore. Oh. Preventing me from sitting down. I'm trying to sneak, but I'm dummy thick, and the clap of my ass cheek keeps alerting the guard. Listen. If your ass cheeks are continuing to start clapping during the night, I'll grab a crossbow and load it as a bolt, <laughs> and I'm gonna pin those cheeks together. I want to see your ass. This is why humans evolved to have their ass cheeks like sideways and not up and down. Because if you went downstairs, just be. <laughs> <laughs> um, permanent injuries. I think. This has happened before. Like, people have lost arms and had them replaced. Uh, who had yeah, the mid? So. I think in the last campaign, Aiden had a, a, a fake eye. I think he had a nerd chat's yes. eye. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I was going to do some horrible shit with that eye. I'm so sad you drowned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made the fucking dogs chase after us and I was in heavy armor I was like, yeah well fuck you I made one dog chase after you the biggest boy uh, so, Yoshi you could have prevented all of that if you hadn't participated in the stupid jailbreak I wasn't the only one that participated in that no half the party participated in it <laughs> and that yeah. half of the party got haunted <laughs> I mean, yeah. the party was just walking along normally, yeah. completely ignored. Yeah. Because you passed your deception check. <laughs> um, this the opening wounds thing. That's something that I tried to touch on last uh, yesterday, with um, patching up uh, Henry. Why Charlie was saying don't move as much. Um, just trying to make sure that that D twenty wasn't rolled. Um, so I did it in the background, <laughs> so I was like, at D20, just to see uh, what happened. And he was fine. Prosthetics. And what's great is Hero Forge now has, because I'm a pro member, they have prosthetics for pro members, so I can add prosthetics to your character sheets, or your character designs if I need to. So that'd be fun. Uh, you get clawed ones as well. Like, yeah, clawed metal hat. Yes. <laughs> I want to be spooky. Um, aesthetic for my concussion. Uh, new head. New brain. No thought. <laughs> head empty. Just a bunch of, like, turning wheels. Like, Same uh, body, but a new person. Oh, something we touched on uh, yes uh, yesterday. Dying. Which is, uh, drop whatever you're holding. Fall prone. Um... Make a death save at the start of your turn. Yada yada. And the death saves, I th they're pretty much, you know, vanilla. Game one hit point and the dying condition ends and you, you can get back up on your feet. Yada yada yada. Uh, d your funeral. Okay. Um, 
I sent Yoshi, if you die, I'm gonna drop you off in the center of town and walk away. That was something. I can't believe you made it. I think that was something I wanted to do. Was um. I think that was something I was gonna do in the first campaign. Is if you buried, like a, a comrade oh, with like a priest. And you spent a lot of money on them. You got XP, like a, a portion of their XP shared amongst you. I think it was uh, their level divided by five rounded up in the amount of XP that would be spread amongst you. But uh, That was back in the day we had five people. Yeah. Good times. It was good times. Yeah, five people now! <laughs> um, I'm not uh, sure we'll scare off Al with them. Yeah. Uh, exactly. No, he'll chase. <laughs> uh, we will never scare him off. Uh, Trust me. Chasing will happen. Oh, it will, and the cart will be involved, and it's gonna be it's gonna be like that one action scene in Tintin on the motorbike going. <laughs> it's, it's just gonna be the cart. Is... Um, the chasing is the cart chasing after us. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. It definitely this touches on a lot of rules that are a good like RP standpoint. Like, uh, say for example, Henry dies, which he probably will, given the current trend. Uh, I think Spitz wouldn't let him just be left behind. No, I don't think so. Because I think that happens to a lot of and like player characters when they die there's left yep. and everyone just marches on like nothing happened which is definitely nobody ever mentions a funeral or taking yeah it's like what or... what do you want to do with them and uh, it's like uh, uh. you guys tried to do something with my character last campaign and then the ship got yeeted and no one saw. No one saw my body again. No, because it was disintegrated. It was that was a mess. I was like, oh, how high do you fall? And I rolled the dice, and it was like, that's a high ass height, and that's probably gonna make something explode, and it did. All the black powder went off. Well, the dragon salt went off. Uh, resurrection. Oh, oh, they've actually changed it as well. Three pristine diamonds. So they've narrowed it down. So it's not, I just have a bag of diamonds worth 300. You need these diamonds. <laughs> okay. An epic diamond. Astral diamond. Oh, it sounds cool. Also, there's a time limit. Well. Revivify needs to be cast within one minute of dying. Yeah. Ray's dead. I, that's the one thing that used to confuse me when I started playing 5e. It was Ray's dead. Sounded like a, a necromancer thing where you just have an army behind you. No, it's basically better revivify. But if you can't save someone with revivify, you can use gentle repose and that adds more time to the time scale. I think it's like 10 minutes or 10 times the amount of time. I think. So it's always, it's always good. Um, variant no resurrections. <laughs> Pretty sure that's gonna be our rule set because I highly doubt we're gonna have enough money. Uh, no, that will be fifth campaign. There will be no resurrections because of certain reasons. Cheating fate, ah, fate points, <laughs> fate points. How to stop yourself from dying? I still have mine. Yeah, I think. I think Henry's the only one that doesn't have it anymore. Yeah. No, Lucius and Henry. So we need to make Henry and Lucius. Why does uh, Lucius like... not have his? Uh, session one. Chasing. Yeah. No, that that's destiny points. Fate points is something when you get to level one, you get one of them. Oh, um, that's a new. That's a it, thing. Yeah, it's a different thing. Fate points is like, okay, I'm about to die. I'm going to spend my fate point and just stabilize and be unconscious. So you, you yeah. get one, but when you spend it, you got to go find a fateful creature. Uh, which 
I have changed what it says. It says legendary creatures. I've made creatures called fateful creatures, which are either common creatures with a lot more stats and a lot more abilities, and they're just harder to find and kill, or they're just like big monsters that uh, I've made. <laughs> I will probably try to avoid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, disease. Oh, how fucking fitting. <laughs> yeah, I was curious. Are we going to use that or just going to leave that off to the side? Oh, no. Um, once you, like, once the camp mechanic starts to come into effect, disease will become a thing. Because, um, you know, camps of people, disease will spread uh, if it's not kept clean enough. Uh, it will spread out. You'll need to quarantine people. You'll need to put them in medical uh, bays. Yeah. So any symptoms were shooting you in the head. It's great. I, 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 used, yeah, I used to play Metal Gear Solid Five. Like, ah, quarantine people? That'll never happen. Here I am, six months later. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Just kill me already. Um, but we've, we've used disease before as like a storytelling mechanic. Like, Dragon flu for uh, Jessica. Uh, yeah. David got it as well. I th I think he contracted it, and they got that weird dragon eye as a uh, an effect. Um, living with disease, <laughs> uh, spreading disease. I, uh, nah. <laughs> We would need to discuss disease in a certain light, I think. Yoshi, once we've settled here, like, buy some disinfectant wipes and uh, all that kind of crap. Where's the nearest general store so I can buy some Windex? Also, toilet paper. Yeah. Um, Before it's sold out again. There's a good thing with. Uh, you'll never find any bacterial stuff. <laughs> in the 1600s like, you might find like some witch hazel but that's it well there's plague doctors around yeah, yeah we'll take those masks <laughs> um, what, do you, what do you mean actual medicine <laughs> Just put some leeches on them they'll be fine that's actually something I'm I don't think we've ever touched well with I've shown ramifications of healing, of what it can do, and if it goes bad. Um, well, lay on hands will remove some disease, I suppose. Um, For as long as it's lasting. Yeah. It much. removed most of the healing magic out of the game, so. Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't removed it, I've made it really hard to get. One disease actual thing that we need to learn soon. Uh, I just got a medic. It came to mind that I either we talked about implementing or had implemented or did was like the side effects of the different healing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that. W I never really touched on it in the second campaign, but. The characters you guys played that lived to the end of the campaign and drunk all of Daron's healing potions, your lifespans have increased significantly. Because your body is just regenerating because there's so much excess inside of you. So, yeah, healing can have a, a negative effect if you consider living longer a negative effect. Um, uh, I mean, there's the undying... Uh, can't remember. Uh, I think that was just called the Undying. Uh, Kara did in the first campaign. It was an example of when healing goes wrong. It's just like, yeah, this person just can't die. They've tried and they've lived thousands of years and outlived everyone they've known. So it's it's sad. <laughs> but it reminded me of a rule that we use that should be a thing. It's the bonus action potion use on yourself. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's very useful. As well as the lay on hands on yourself. It's always a bonus action. Because it's just... 
I mean, it makes more sense to take an action and do it to someone else, but you're just jamming it into their face and swilling it yeah. down their throat. Um, there's one thing that this doesn't talk about. It's drinking so many potions that you might end up regurgitating or needing to go to the toilet. I think he I think David did that in the Oro's Cairn when... <laughs> It's like you drank so much, you just had to wait as you were going down the next floor. Just like, I need to take a minute. <laughs> um, as, uh, it was Auro's Cairn. It was basically the 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 dungeon light situation. The roguelite situation. No, no, there was the, uh, another one with Notrin. Um, the, the, not the Underdark, the the Dreadlord's domain? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, the uh, the Deep Roads. Where was, yeah, where, is, where I was in my big dragon form, drank a lot of potions. And, and then reverted back, and you were like, oh. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ooh. Yeah, size does matter. It's like, I can drink all these, and I'm fine. And then reverts like, I need to pee. <laughs> oh, my. Speaking of uh, keeping day. yourself hydrated, your survival conditions. Um, eating, drinking, sleeping, maintaining your temperature, and your stamina. I never understood the stamina DC. I think it's mostly for travel, uh, more than anything. Um, I think most of you manage to keep between either hungry and well-fed most of the time, that sort of bracket. Yeah. I think the one that changed the most for us is temperature. Temperature that does change. Um, gear pass as well. Yeah. Uh, the weather rolls will change soon. Uh, Might just has very bizarre weather. If you cross the river into, the, into Elysia, the weather is just nice in general. It's just normal. No. So, it's like, oh, how sunny is it going to be today? I don't know. Is it ripe for picking grapes for wine? <laughs> yes. All the time. How many olives can I make? <laughs> yeah. You uh, don't make olives. You grow them. Well, you're making them. <laughs> burn olives. Disgusting. Uh, olive oil is great. You don't eat them. You step on them to make oil. Yeah, olive oil's great, man. Just like you step on a grape to let out a little wine. Oh, just use coconut oil. I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> no, you get you go play with your palm oil. Ah yes, mono monoculture is destroying the rainforest. Palm oil. Oh, dude. I've tried to get rid of palm oil so bad. It's so hard to get rid of your diet. Um. Oh, here we go. Stamina. Uh, it's hard work being an adventurer. Bales to fight, ropes to climb, rivers to swim. Uh, part of strenuous event, the GM can ask you to make a stamina check. It's a con save? Against the DC of your best condition. Okay. That's a con save. Here yeah. What, that will probably come into very... It will be very handy if one of you guys falls into the river. Because that's going to be a hard-ass river to swim against. It's fast. <laughs> it's big, uh, it fast. It ain't fun. The stamina check might have been applicable for uh, chasing. It's something I overlook. Uh, but that's why I usually ask if you dash. Like, how many times you can dash, which is your con mod. Um, minus one. You get to dash once, and you have to wait. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think Call of Duty running just five <laughs> seconds. Ago. Ah, 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 ah. Or um, or like Hill of Reach original sprints. <laughs> this fucking oh, asthmatic yeah. Spartans. <laughs> <laughs> like you see, you see these genetically engineered super soldiers. <laughs> they can't run for shit. It's just weird, right? 
Yeah. To genetically engineer to have an insane endurance. And it can't run. Thing. But step faster than walking, and you will be exhausted I mean, after five seconds. I think there is lore to it. Like, they are very heavy, and that armor is heavy as shit. I would be tired carrying it. But, um. Absolutely, but they're not entirely carrying it, right? Because that armor is oh. capable of standing on its own. Yeah. Uh, they. I think they've changed it up with like the later Halo games. Uh, I know they just made it a thing. It's like you can sprint for a longer time now. It's like, oh, cool. Because game mechanics and they don't want to make it busted. And, and don't even get me started about um, Warhammer 40k. Uh... Vermintide and stuff? No, 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 no. I mean, just. How the fuck? Well, I can understand you losing access to technology, mm -hmm. but considering technology to be a god, yeah, is some all in glory of them. The glorious emperor, stress mechanics, yes, yes. Yeah, looking forward to getting my first affliction. Yeah, you're really close to your first affliction. Or your neck. I don't know what's the other one called. It's not an affliction. It's like a, a boon or something. <clears throat> boon? I, I don't remember what. It's got like a name. It's been a while. <clears throat> Healing stress. Downtime. Taking a long rest. Calm emotions helps. How do we stress for that? Oh, it, it's just called uh, well, an affliction. There's another one. There is another thing. It's like you get a benefit. Yeah, it, it is an affliction. Okay. Like acute and valid, it John checks and saves. <clears throat> oh, dude, there's actually potential for benefit. I don't know that. Yeah, uh, they go away once you've rested properly. Um, spend some gold to roll a d20 to make an affliction removal attempt if you find someone that can do it. Or I think I had mentioned like hot springs and stuff like that, or relaxing in the camp, telling stories. At the camp, doing small activities, relaxing in a calm environment, <laughs> or taking some of the the vial of the sea god juice. <laughs> Get a boon from being stressed, and then after that point, just continuously put yourself in stressful situations. It's like I want to get better. I want to become a god. This comes back. Just like, I've seen shit. <laughs> it's like I don't need to relax. I need more stress. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shotgunning Red Bulls and running into traffic, like. <laughs> uh, indefinite madness. I think it gives you a heart attack if you like double it. If I remember, um, no amount of jostling or damage can wake you. You, you waken with indefinite madness. There is a thing; it will kill you. I think it's dragons usually do that for you. Insanity zones. Insanity zones? Uh, I don't know where you're seeing that, man. Uh, it's underneath affliction. Oh, there we go. One thirty. Uh, stress is only gained in certain areas in sanity zones. Outside of these zones, characters don't gain stress. Okay, I think it's like um, uh, like say, there's an example that they. Like, say the Tomb of Horror. That's a stressful fucking place. People just die by turning the lever the wrong way. That's a stressful zone. Uh, a battle zone, like a battlefield, it's stressful. Uh, if, you, if you're not uh, socially acute, maybe a ballroom. Um, just stuff where you are not meant to be there and you're out of your element, that could be stressful. So every every day that I stream, I'm getting in my stress zone. <laughs> like, Insanity zone for Lucius, the Red Lantern District. <laughs> it's like, can I get some catnip and fucking Madam of, of the, the Mistress of the Moonlight House? Is like, no. It's like, ah, oh, uh, okay. Uh, so uh, catnip? No, but we got a <laughs> dwarf and love Boris, though. And dwarf and love hammer. <laughs> I wanted to add that character in for so long. I wanted to do it last campaign in the Grass House, but I was like, 
this is a perfect opportunity to use Boris. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's insanity. Is that definitely? I think. And if you went to like uh, the the realm of pandemonium in the in the limbo, yeah, that's a big insanity zone where stress just mounts. Um, On second thought, that's not. Ah, uh, you won't be playing hop in this campaign, but potentially, unless you want to find an astral diamond, then you have to go and get one from the astral plane. Um, short rest, long rest, and leveling up. Whoa. Yeah. Even better. What I enjoy the mechanic that we decided on that short rests take eight hours and long rests are a week. Because it just means that there is <laughs> there is a greater management aspect to it. So oh I've burnt out all my spells and I need to wait. It's isn't it great you've got a warlock <laughs> in your team? <laughs> it's like I just need eight hours. <laughs> Fighter. As as I mentioned earlier, that was one of the things that Kenny wanted to talk about. Is either potentially changing the long rest to shorten it, or so his paladin abilities come back just a little earlier. Because after he uses that one ability, he's just a terrible fighter for a week. Um. Then I would suggest to him either we try it out once he's become more spellcasty. And then if it's becoming a problem, then we adjust it. Or I will adjust him, which is probably a better idea. Uh, yeah, I think it's better to adjust the individual. Yeah. What, I, what I could do is, here, or just developing like a mechanic slash rule, is if he doesn't enjoy the long rest sort of time period, I, would make, I will ask him to make a religion check to see if he can appease Helm enough to get some slots back, not all of them. It would work. It's like, oh, you get uh, Helm's happy enough to give you a little bit more juice. Maybe a couple of first level spell slots. And that's it. That's that's your. That's all you get for a week. <laughs> Basically getting like, uh, what's what's the wizard thing? Arcane recovery? It's like, oh, you regain these spell slots. Be a good idea. Uh, I believe it's 1-800 dial, dial your gone. Your Call one eight hundred, fucking helm. Just the sound of a helmet being banged on. Ding ding. Hello. <laughs> ah. Hey, <laughs> hey, you've contacted the astral plane. <laughs> uh, uh. I'm gonna contact the creator gods and just be like, hey, what? <laughs> Yes, I'd like to speak with your manager, please. <laughs> the manager's dead. Oh! When's the, the new guy coming in? Oh, we don't know. Wait, there's a new guy coming? Ah, uh, not yet. The, that's old lore. Uh, that I kind of forgot about in Campaign 1 when you met the, the original god who is technically dead. Lore-wise. Canon-wise. Yeah. Um... Regain class and race. Some class and races regain powers of short rest. Quit monkey one. Remember to check your character sheet to see which features you recover. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably change uh, the Paladin channel to Vintage to come back on short rest. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, quick slots. We don't use those. <laughs> Investigate, treat wounds, yeah, setting up camp! Yes, the fun part. The best part of waking up is a d20 in your cup. Starts choking. It's a d4. <laughs> Son of a bitch! God save the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we're we're becoming more familiar with this at least uh i definitely enjoy seeing you guys setting up camp and deciding what's going on and whoever's to look out and if we fuck it up i can just do things in the background they don't know about i love it yeah, that's that's what camping is about yeah uh uh out of 
of all of it, I think... I don't know what part you guys enjoy the most about the camp setting. I think it's because it's mechanically pretty useful. But what what are your guys' opinions? Uh, it's like a big... important, I think. Mm -hmm. For all... yeah. And it puts the players in a position where they actually have to RP from it. Yeah. Give the DM a bit of rest <laughs> in all the chaos that's going on. Because most of the time it's just player versus player there. Mm. It's uh, the um, the storytelling thing. I find that is one of the best little aspects of it ever. It reduces your stress. You get to learn a bit about a character or you can talk about like how the day went really it doesn't have to be a story like oh, yeah. oh man that fight today that was fucking whack i don't beat the shit how was your day today you were fucking with me the entire time you know exactly how it was <laughs> you know exactly what it was yeah, but how do you feel like i'm on fire <laughs> just covered in burns it's like yeah <laughs> yeah camping equipment uh before you show cover you don't have any proper camping equipment really camping chat yeah. Camping checks, man, that's that's great. Just to determine how great it is to camp, camping on a river up a sea, that shit. <laughs> Just on your little like raft, like we need to set up a tent. I'm, I'm gonna do that. Um, wake up next morning. Where the hell are we? <laughs> Wilson. I'm sorry, Wilson. Question: If we set up camp on a raft, who's who's turn is it to do lookout, and what's the point of lookout? Uh, uh rocks, rock. uh, currents, alligators, bandits, Ash. bandits on a canoe, <laughs> canoe bandits. <laughs> Just paddling after us. Steely <laughs> wheelie, paddly mobily. <laughs> The, the job of the lookout is not only to look out for threats, right? Also to make sure that the raft doesn't fall off some uh, cliffs or something. I'm going! So there's a waterfall. Rope you fight <laughs> the uh, canoe that the uh, watch is stepping in. Oh, I can... So that it can speed up and slow down. The I I can just imagine it. Everyone's just like chilling out, telling stories, and just like the lookout doesn't even know. Like he notices something, and someone pricks him. Goes, "Does that just sound like water falling?" As the lookout goes, "That's exactly water falling." Starts paddling the other direction. <laughs> Shh, sh sh fuck! Is that a waterfall? Yep. Shark rock. Shark rocks at the bottom, most likely. Ah, probably. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> fuck it. I got the shield. Dunk. Uh. It's pretty good. Uh, very in depth. Uh, cooking food, uh, brewing beverages, play music, tell story, repair items, craft items, play games, relax in solitude. <sighs> AKA stab yourself in the hand. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, getting some sleep, trance. Yeah, wearing armor, looking out, uh... <laughs> ambush, hasn't happened yet, false alerts, hasn't happened yet, yet, <laughs> magic spells, uh, very handy. Uh, stress. Nah. Long rest. The good one. Oh yeah, the one we haven't even touched yet. Yeah, you're, you're probably going to end up taking a long rest in either Little Orchard or somewhere, maybe in Elysia. Depends on where you end up. Yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah, there, there are... The long rest is great because it has like key points that you can do instead of just wandering endlessly and and takes a certain amount of times to do stuff uh selling loot uh you have to make sure your lifestyle can afford it 
for a week renting property, picking primary activities, which will take X amount of time. Um, three rumors. Yes, here are three rumors, which means I would need to crop up some ideas. Um, I need to make a table like this for just use. Uh, secondary activities, it's cool. Settling up. Uh, yeah, if you're moving on. You're settling up. What about settling down? I I buy a property. I'm gonna bring. I'll I will put the monopoly board on roll twenty. I'm gonna do it. No, no. Every time you pass go, you pay me two hundred gold. <laughs> Leveling up, that don't matter. <laughs> AC is a dump stat. <laughs> the random tables. Uh, if you want to make it complete. This is actually how I made uh, Guinevere and Aiden. I was like, yeah, let's gonna roll some dice. And the class skills. And all this. Uh, Stegosaurus. Uh, FAQs. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Penalize X class? No. Yeah, that's. There's some stuff we need to touch on a little bit more or find the time to actually get to them. Um, there's. Uh, active defense? That was something I was planning to talk about, but. Only a, I would only apply it to someone who's got a shield or has like a like a weapon adaptability, which is a feat that I like feats I'm working on that are before you can get the master ability, so you don't become a great weapon master off the bat. <laughs> like, okay, oh, okay. I better better reach level four before that then. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna introduce like. Great weapon adept, so it's similar, but it's just a little bit less powerful, and then you get better at like level 10 or something. Teamwork, yeah, it's fine. Uh, flasks, potions, oh, you know I, I, I actually want uh, D and D CRPG and then roguelike version. I mean, they're working on a VR uh, like RPG game thing that's similar to D&D, where like you have a games master that creates an environment, and you make your character and you interact with it through VR. Which that sounds fucking awesome to me. That sounds awesome. So, <laughs> but I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford shit. I could. I could buy it if I wanted to. <laughs> it's only on Kickstarter right now, though. As well, but. Oh, I see. They've made Hunter's Mark an ability now, which it, fuck, it should have been in the first place. <laughs> like, like, uh, Paladin Smites. Ah. Uh. You know what? I'm kind of, I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll introduce that shit. I'll do it. Why not? They've added in some new elemental disciplines as well, so it's... <gasps> Uh, you're making the four elements monk fucking useful for a change. Instead of just being like, hey. Hey, hey, I punch with fire. I am real avatar. Uh, second wind. Uh, that'll be very good for Kornar. It actually makes second wind useful. Yeah, I believe we already decided to add that in. Yeah, it scales a lot better yeah it actually makes it scale rather than yeah. oh you've gained another fighter level here have have like an extra one yeah, yeah. So, so oh i rolled a one i'm feeling fucking six better than i was earlier uh, there's... Uh, i like the uh the addition of changing the rally uh, maneuver for battle masters as well, so that it boosts people a little bit better, and it's not just your charisma. 
Because fighters don't have charisma, man. They just beat people to death. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're just more exciting than they are. They beat people to death and look good doing it. It's the more people we've killed, the more we're covered in blood and gore, the higher our charisma stat. Every time you hit somebody with your sword, just swoosh your hair back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Every time you hit someone with your sword, you take off your helmet, you swoosh your hair back, put on your helmet again. Uh, <laughs> take your helmet off all of a sudden. I think the other thing that I completely forgot was the languages that everyone can learn, like the max you could learn. Oh yeah, it's based off intelligence. Based off intelligence. Unless you have a racial language, then yeah. Yeah. Like if you're... Racial too. Common in Orcish. Orcish. Yeah. Yeah. 30, yeah. I know for some reason it's. I don't think we took that one, by the way, because that's three languages. Uh, language with a decent range. I think. I think if you got it as a racial thing, we didn't care about it. If it was like a. A background thing, I think we gave you one instead of two or somewhat. There's a lot of like different things. Angel plus one, so common orcan and dwarven. I think there. I think that I made a, an allowance that if it, if it was a part of your backstory, then it makes sense. Like say if you have a dwarven smithing master, then yeah, it makes sense to learn that language. You might not be great at it, but you can speak a little bit. Speaking pigeon dwarven. <laughs> I I I I I I I I I I That's that's all Scottish as well. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I don't always buy shoes in Aberdeen, but when I do, I know what shoe fits which boot. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> fit, 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 fits, fit, fit. That's a that's a sentence. I, 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 I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to. Redneck Scotsman. <laughs> I think we're reaching the end of the. Yeah, we. I mean, this is a new thing, and I need to read about this stuff i don't know what the hell a trial is but hey this i'm gonna use the shit out of this if it's good like yeah, breaking trial. down stuff it definitely has potential from what i've read like just looking at this little table here yes this will be a fucking useful mechanic i'm gonna read the shit out of this <laughs> it look it's got little tick boxes can sort that out. Fix the storm wells, fay portal. Fay gates are a thing. <laughs> that we gotta put the brakes in a certain fashion, and then we get the fuck out and just teleports into a puddle of goop. I'm like, ah. Oops. We're in the chicken dimension. <laughs> We're in the cow dimension. <laughs> uh, I'm a, I'll have to read that. A little bit, just to, before I can talk about it. Um, hook components. Uh, I've tried hooking things, but you know what? You you guys are a bunch of fishes that I just can't seem to catch. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, unless we have any parting words to say, I don't think we've got anything else. Well, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, no, I don't have anything. Not much that we've really changed. Yeah. I mean, rules change. Rules are made to be broken. For now. <laughs> rules yeah. made to be looked at. And then forgotten. Off and then, yeah. <laughs> Adventures are made to be forgotten. 
Campaign 3's fucking tagline. <laughs> so, yeah. I've got, I've got no parting words as it is. Uh, not at all. Stay safe. Don't buy up old toilet paper. You don't need that much. Yeah, man. I've still got some left over from April. <laughs> I've got like seven rolls left. I only bought a 25 pack. Or 24 pack or whatever the hell it was. That ain't bad. Um. Yeah. So thanks for joining in on the Phil Actory podcast. We'll be back in two weeks' time with another episode where I don't know what we'll be talking about. So stay put on the schedule, and hopefully we have a little bit more people here, depending on scheduling. So uh, thank you all for watching, and as always, stay safe out there, adventurers. Bye. Bye.